Welcome back to the channel. As always, if you are copy trading, you are an absolute moron and you deserve to lose all your money. And with that out of the way, we're going to look today at a stock called Vertiv Holdings, ticker VRT. What do these guys do? They are a global solution provider for data centers, which are hyperscalers, enterprise uh, businesses and telecom companies. They have multiple lines of business. The top three account for 85% of the revenue. That is power management solutions, thermal management and cooling systems, and services. And it is understood, albeit we don't have exact figures, about uh, how those business lines contribute to margins, that those are the higher margin businesses. They have a couple more. Uh, revenue sources, which are IT systems and infrastructure solutions, but those account for a much smaller portion at around 15%. So what happened with this company? As you can see now, the company has been on a roll since uh, August. It's been going up quite a bit since, uh, effectively almost uh, doubling. And you can see as well, that they have recovered and far surpassed the all-time highs that were reached in 2021. There are many, many companies out there that have not come back nowhere near uh, the levels that they achieved during the year. But as you can see, these guys are uh, getting close to four times that level. So obviously that is very good. How does that work? In terms of the uh, multiple expansion, it is quite pronounced, signaling that uh, even um, now the the market is willing to pay a um, higher multiple for this account, more so compared to the 2021 period where there was um, a very frothy market. So the market's paying a lot more now. And what is that? Well, of course, uh, with the kind of business that these guys are in, uh, they're serving a lot of uh, AI related businesses that require their services. So think about a massive data center uh, that requires cooling solutions. All those data centers are generating heat from the computers that they host processing of data. That's part of the business that these guys are in. And of course, that is a massive tailwind and is the reason why um, they have been able to achieve this performance, at least partly. Because what happened is that during this period here in 2022 and even 2023, the company was struggling. They had uh, a much more poor operation. They have weak pricing discipline and supply chain inefficiencies. They also were not very good at managing their cash flow. So back then, the company was highly leveraged. If we look here at uh, their financial position, you can see that back then, even though revenue was still growing at double digit, it was doing so at a lower rate than it is now. And also the margins were thinner and they have been accelerating uh, in previous years, and they're also set to continue accelerating. So what happened? Um, they, first of all, reduced their debt, right? And that uh, also, coupled with the changes in uh, their operation, helped them to achieve higher EPS. So we don't have only uh, margin expansion and multiple expansion. We have as well revenue, which is definitely helping the company. So the results of all the measures that they took, essentially they reduced working capital as well, uh, from 20% to 16% of sales. Uh, they introduced better inventory management. They improved customer payment terms. And like I mentioned before, they strengthen their balance sheet. They also um, uh, diversify their supply chain and introduce a capacity optimization 25% buffer. So what are the results of that? 
we can see that already in the numbers here, right? The operating margins in 2022 were around 7.7. .7. And as of 2023, they more than doubled to about 15.5%. In the last quarter, in Q3 2024, they, for the first time, surpassed 20%. And management is optimistic that they can not only stay at that level, but actually go above and beyond in a sustainable manner. Their net leverage, as I said, uh, was also decreased significantly from 5.6 to one and, a half, uh, one and a half times, which is a massive improvement, uh, considering that it's not uh, a very long period. And also their free cash flow improved by at about a billion year on year. So with all that, you see very strong performance in 2023 and arguably in 2024 as well. I think that that's going to continue in 2025 because the AI tailwind is alive and well. And management commentary also emphasizes that they still see significant room for improvement. How can they back that? Well, in the last quarter, uh, the results, like, like I said, were quite positive already. But they also updated their 2024 guidance. So they increased their guidance for organic growth by 1%. They also did that for their operating margin, adding 135 million additional. Um, and they also upgraded their operating margins expectations by about 30 basis points. That applies as well to their adjusted free cash flow at about 125 million. Uh, and there was also some commentary on uh, KPIs. Now, overall, the KPIs were uh, pretty positive. So if I pull up my KPI table here, we can see that uh, overall, the KPIs that we see have been growing quite nicely. You see some weakness here in terms of order growth in, in the last quarter. However, the reason for that, according to the company, is because these um, quarters here grew very, very fast due to the poor performance of the previous quarters, creating a base effect. Uh, so they started reporting that in a different way that is more consistent. But overall, you still see the backlog growing nicely. There's positive pipeline growth and the lead times have been extended a little bit, but that in part is also positive because they are getting involved with larger and more complex projects which of course has also a positive impact on the revenues and margins so overall i think that this is a stock that is going to continue uh, to do very well in the short and even medium term in terms of uh, the catalyst for that we have earnings coming on uh, the 21st of february which is far away up until then, of course, we have uh, US election, we have uh, many different geopolitical events occurring, and the festive period. Um, so with all that, I think we could see the stock, if the market reacts positively, um, still in favorable, favorable territory. An additional catalyst that I see that could massively propel the stock uh, upwards is the potential for qualification in the S&P. This is something that was discussed by management uh, about a year ago already, and that's based on their their liquidity, their market cap, uh, and also the strategic importance, right? So I think that is something that um, we could see down the line. It's hard to predict. Um, but that's part of the reason why I'm going to be structuring the trade with the expiries that I'll show uh, very shortly. In terms of risks, these guys at the end of the day are depending on the supply chain and geopolitical risks. They are a global company with exposure to not only the United States, but also Asia and EMEA. And a China slowdown or a late recovery for China could diminish the um, speed at which their revenue and earnings grow. So because of that, um, we would want to see the economy globally 
accelerating nicely for those guys to do as best as they could possibly do. There are some other issues as well in terms of competition, HVAC, uh, and all the players, all the market entrants that are trying to uh, compete with them. That's always a concern. There are some other companies that are doing quite well in that respect. And of course, I mentioned as well the lead times for projects. That is entirely dependent on customers. Uh, so these guys have to be very good at balancing the supply and demand and their operational capacity to meet customer demands. And there's always things that could go uh, unexpectedly. But on our law, I think it's a stock that uh, uh, has the probabilities to go in a favor. My price target for this in the near term is 130, uh, but with the possibility of heading to 150 or even 160 after the earnings in February. So the way I'm going to choose playing this is by buying the March uh, 21st 120 calls. As you can see, there's pretty good spreads in liquidity here and volatility uh, at 55% support the price targets that we're after. Additionally, I will be selling the 130 strikes uh, and I'll be doing that on a one-to-one -one ratio. In other words, we're entering a diagonal, but the short spread, excuse me, the short leg expires before earnings, leaving us with one month to run. So obviously, if the earnings report is pretty positive, uh, we could see the stock going up upon release, but also a further increase between late February all the way until late March. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon.